It is the biggest bottleneck between Washington and New Jersey on the Northeast Corridor. The problem starts inside there. We have uh, small portions of the walls uh, and ceiling where we have masonry and uh, bricks occasionally fall. The corridor was developed a long time ago. Before electricity, we had electric locomotives. The, these tunnels were built when there were steam engines. But today, it's electricity from overhead wiring that's humming in the air, putting a buzz into our microphone. That electricity, power to a parade of trains. Traveling Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, the busiest passenger rail line in America, and it's crumbling. Because of the ex excessive amount of water that leaks into the tunnel, it causes the, the railroad tracks and the ties here to fail prematurely. We've come to West Baltimore to look at the BNP tunnel, a 30 mile an hour speed bump on what should be a super highway for trains. The tunnel opened in 1873, eight years after the Civil War. If there were symbols of America's infrastructure woes for fixtures far beyond their useful life, the Northeast Corridor could be Exhibit A. The way into New York City is through these tunnels underneath the Hudson. They also need replacing at more than $11 billion. The projects are certainly on the tips of tongues these days. The rebuilding and replacement of the Baltimore Potomac Tunnel. We're talking about critical jobs like the Hudson River Tunnel, the Baltimore Potomac Tunnels, and the Susquehanna River Bridge. The curves of the BNP Tunnel restrict the speed. Its size limits the number of trains from three or four tracks to two. Amtrak has plans for a new tunnel, a more graceful curve north of the BNP, still going underneath a part of the city that looks like this above ground. Trains will go faster, 100 miles per hour, all at a cost of $4 billion. When we secure the funding, it'll take approximately 10 to 12 years to make the new tunnels operation. Amtrak may have its best ally yet in President Joe Biden, Hello, Amtrak Joe, a nickname for all the years he rode between Washington and Wilmington. The station there in Delaware carries his name. I've been riding in Amtrak for almost as long as there's been in Amtrak. I've come to see that Amtrak doesn't just carry us from one place to another. It opens up enormous possibilities. Amtrak is now 50 years old, a creation of the federal government, taking over passenger trains after freight railroads wanted out of that declining business. It's been a rough ride, especially for those long-distance trains that cover big parts of the country, or try to. It is a, what I would call, a very spindly network. Bob Johnston is a correspondent at Trains Magazine, where he covers Amtrak. One of the things that Amtrak needs to do better is they need to tell people where the trains go, when they leave, and how they can use them. Outside of the Northeast Corridor and some track in Michigan, Amtrak owns none of its network. It fights for track space with freight trains. But in a place like Glasgow, Montana, and other small towns across the country, it is essential transportation. Amtrak has no dedicated source of funding, which means a backlog of big ticket projects like tunnels and bridges and aging passenger cars still rolling from the 1970s. At least the highways have had annual, reliable, regular funding. Amtrak has not had that. Amtrak has had to go for appropriations every year. Amtrak did snag a couple billion to replace its fast train, the Acela. All new equipment is coming, but don't expect a big burst of speed, given conditions of the Northeast Corridor. A corridor with bridges, like the one over the Susquehanna River. It's also on Amtrak's replacement list, at 115 years old.